Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about buffers and we're also going to be talking about how to actually create a good buffer and what really makes a, a good buffer and we are also uh, briefly talk about the buffer capacity. So to start out with, buffers are actually going to be any chemical or any set of uh, solution that's going to be resisting the change in the pH when you add a small amount of acid or a base in there. If I want to take an alive example of buffer that exists in our body is going to be uh, the blood pH is about 7.4 and you don't want to change the pH of blood too much away from the 7.4. You don't want to bring it down to like less than 7.4 and you don't want to bring it over 7.4. So to keep this pH about 7.4 in the blood you must have a really good buffer system in there and um, the chemical that we really use in in order to create that uh, buffer is the carbonic acid in inside the blood now what does really make a good buffer system to have a good buffer system you have to have so-called either a weak acid and its conjugate base salt or you can have the other way around where you can start out with a weak base and have its conjugate acid salt and um, there is also always a misunderstanding that if you have a strong acid or strong base, you're not going to be able to create a uh, buffer. But that really depends on what else you have beside having the strong acid and a strong base. Like, let's suppose if I have a weak acid and I can still create a buffer system out of that weak acid even after adding the strong base as long as I don't add one equivalent of that strong base. If I'm staying below one equivalent of uh, the strong base in terms of adding, then that weak acid can still produce a buffer system. And how does that really work? So remember, suppose I just have this weak acid HA and I'm adding NaOH to it. And then um, what it's going to make at the end of the day? Well, obviously it's going to make water and it's going to make an NaA there. So this is your acid here and what's going to be your conjugate base salt? Well your conjugate base salt is going to be NaA here. If I'm losing some of the HA by adding NaOH, what I'm really making, I'm making the conjugate base. So that was a requirement to create the buffer solution. You want to have the weak acid and its conjugate base or the weak base and its conjugate acid. And that's exactly what this base doing. As long as you don't add too much of it, it's still going to be making that conjugate base and it's going to be creating this buffer solution. And uh, if you do add too much, let's say you go over one equivalent of this NaOH, that's when you don't really going to be creating in a buffer solution. Uh, so we will take some examples as we move along a little bit. Same story when we have a weak base and uh, having at least uh, less than one equivalent of strong acid, you still have the potential to create a buffer solution. Let's talk about what do not create a buffer solution. Having a strong acid, strong base combination is going to be a no-no. You don't create a buffer solution with that. Having a weak acid and a strong acid combination, that's like saying like you have an acid and then you're add, adding another acid. That's not going to create a buffer solution. Having a, a weak base and strong base also is not going to create the buffer solution. And then going back to this stuff here, like if you're adding a weak acid and you're adding the strong base onto it, if you go over one equivalent of that strong base, you're not going to be able to create the buffer solution again. So it's extremely important to be able to identify your bases and acids when you're trying to identify your buffer solutions. Well, let's look at some of these examples here and see which one of these pairs will make up a buffer solution. The first example I have here is the NH3 and NH4Cl combination. So NH3 is a base. What's going to be the conjugate acid of NH3? So remember, when you're trying to figure out the conjugate acid of a base, all you really got to do is add in a proton on it and see how it looks like. So when I add a proton onto the NH3, it's going to be NH4+. Plus. The question you want to ask yourself is, do you have this NH4 plus in the solution? And when I look at this uh, ammonium chloride, remember this ammonium chloride is just going to break into ions as NH4 plus and Cl minus. 
So now you do have the base, which is NH3, and you do have the conjugate acid of that. So since you have both, as you are required to have for to create the buffer, this will create a buffer solution. What about uh, something like this 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH and 75 milliliters of uh, 0.1 molar CH3 COOH? So be able to identify these chemicals first. I got uh, uh, the NaOH is going to be your strong base and uh, the CH3 COOH is going to be your weak acid. So you could possibly produce a buffer solution as, the, as long as you don't neutralize all of your weak acid here. And I can clearly see here, if I figure out the moles of both of those, and that's going to be the best way to figure out uh, if you are neutralizing all of it. I have, the, I have this weak acid, uh, which is called acetic acid, and it is indeed in monoprotic acid, so also keep that in mind. If I go ahead and write down the reaction, it's going to be CH3COOH plus NaOH, and it goes on to make CH3COO minus Na plus, and then obviously water. So this reaction is already balanced, which means it's a one to one mole ratio with respect to the acid and your base. So figure out what their molarities or what their moles going to be. Uh, quickly, so I'm starting out with this uh, 50 milliliters of NaOH. So 50 milliliters of NaOH is going to be 0 0.05 liters of NaOH, and then I'm going to be having 0.1 moles of NaOH divided by liters. So I'm getting 0 0.005 moles of NaOH. And then we can do the same thing uh, with the base, uh, with the acid here. So I have 75 milliliters, so that's going to be 0 0.075 liters. And then I'm going to be converting that to the moles by doing 0 0.1 moles divided by liters. So it's going to be 0 0.0075 moles of your acid there. So just write down acid. So you clearly have more moles of the acid than the moles of base you're adding. And since it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, you will lose some of it. And if I want to, you know, go ahead and probably just rewrite this equation a little bit so that I can have the water there. So that's minus plus, and then you have water there. So if I'm, if I'm looking at uh, what's really going on with my moles here, I'm starting out with this 0 0.0075 moles of the acid and 0 0.005 moles of the base. And uh, initially, don't worry about how much you have in the beginning. But I'm, I'm going to be losing all of your base because that's your strong base. It's going to neutralize that many moles of your acid. But in return, what's that going to make? It's actually going to be making that many moles off your conjugate base there. And that's typically the requirement. You want to have a weak acid and you want to have the conjugate base. So what this base really does here, it's helping you to create this conjugate base. And as long as you have some of the acid and some of the conjugate base, it still can create a buffer solution. It may not be the strongest buffer solution, but it can still have the potential to create the buffer solution. If you, however, lose all of your acid, then you would not be able to make a buffer solution. Or even if you have more NaOH uh, than how much uh, acid you have, then it's not going to be able to create the buffer solution. Okay, so that one should be good. That's a buffer solution as well. Okay, let's look at this next one here. Uh, we got the HF and the HCl. Well, it turns out they're both acid. This HF is going to be the weak acid. And the HCl is a strong acid, so I can't really have two acids and expected buffer there. So no buffer on that one. What about this next one here? We got 20 milliliters of uh, 0.5 molar nitrous acid and 15 milliliters of 0.8 molar NaOH. So this nitrous acid is going to be your weak acid, and then this NaOH is going to be the strong base. Okay, so first go and be able to write the equation there. I got HNO2 
NaOH seems like it's going to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio. It's going to make water and it's going to make NaNO2. So remember the HNO2 was your acid. The NaNO2 is going to be your conjugate base. So as long as you have both of those present at the end of the day, you will be able to make the buffer solution. So that's what you really need to figure out if you're actually going to have both of those in there because you're going to be using this base to neutralize some of this nitrous acid. So let's figure out their moles first. So I'm having 0 0.02 moles, or 2 liters of this uh, HNO2. And then I'm going to be multiplying that by 0.5 moles divided by liters. So that's just going to be 0 0.01 moles for HNO2. I'm going to do the same thing with NaOH. So I'm starting out with 0 0.015 uh, liters of NaOH. And then that's going to be 0.8 moles divided by liters there. So we'll do your math here. So after doing this math, it comes out to be 0 0.012 moles of NaOH. So I can clearly see I have more moles of NaOH than the moles of HNO2. Um, so if I go ahead and write down in the form of a nice table there, I'm going to have 0 .00, 0 0.012 for the NaOH and 0 0.01 for the HNO2. So I'll lose all of this. So I'll lose all of this HNO2. Uh, and even after losing all of that, I will still have some of the H NaOH left over, which means you're going to have an excessive strong base left over and that's not going to make it a buffer so no buffer in this particular case that's because you have more of the NaOH you will be learning how you're going to be creating the buffer solutions and you're also going to be asked questions like um, what particular weak acid or weak base you want to use if you want to create a buffer around a particular pH and typically, the answer is you want to make sure you are as close as to the pKa value. So if I'm looking at uh, um, creating two buffers solutions, one at pH of 4 and the other one at pH of 7, then uh, the best answer I'm going to be getting here, so the first one, uh, acidic acid has a pH of 4.74, okay, and that's fine because you know it's, it's a little bit closer to the 4, but let's just check other options as well. The nitrous acids, pKa, well this should have been P here, is going to be 3.35, still closer to the 4. If you have a pKa um, going up and down by a unit of 1, that's going to be your buffer range. So the buffer range for this acidic acid is going to be 3.74 to 5.74. So that's going to be your best buffer range there. As far as your nitrous acid go, it's going to be... 2.35 to 4.35 so so far both of those actually does fall in this 4.0 but let me just uh, look through all of those here so this diphosphate ion 7.21 so your good buffer range here is going to be uh, 6.21 to 8.21 and then um, all of these supposed to be the pKa's rather here not Ka's uh, the hydrocyanic acid is going to be 9.3, so that's going to be 8.3 to 10.3. And then clearly the benzoic acid is going to be here uh, 3.2 to 5.2. Now when I'm trying to create the buffer solution of 4.0, I want to see which pKa is actually going to be the closest to the 4.0. And I do see three different acids or three different chemicals here that are giving you the, a range I'm looking for but the closest value I'm going to be getting is with the benzoic acid that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the best option there and if that wasn't there then you would p either pick the acidic acid or nitrous acid because in that case those are going to be the one falling in the in the range of uh, buffer solution what about this 7.0? Which particular acid or which particular chemical you would pick to create a buffer solution of 7.0? Well, the only one that's going to be matching your uh, the buffer range is going to be your dihydrogen phosphate because it goes from 6.21 to 8.21. So that could create a pH, a buffer solution of 
pH 7.0. Let's talk about uh, what a buffer capacity is. Tech in, in qualitative terms, uh, the buffer capacity is just going to be how well it can resist the change in the pH. And uh, the best way or the, the best position you're going to have to have the maximum buffer capacity is when the ratio of your acid and the base or its conjugate part is almost one to one. So if I'm looking at, suppose, HF and uh, NAF, because HF is your weak acid, so NAF is going to be your conjugate base salt. So if the concentration of those is one to one, that's when you're going to be getting your best buffer capacity. And that's going to be true for all of those cases. As long as it goes away from a one to one mole ratio, that's when it's going to start losing its buffer capacity. Then it may be stronger one way, but not going to be stronger the other way, depending on what you're really adding. What about uh, the total buffer concentration? In terms of total buffer concentration, like more salt, more acid, and this conjugate base you have, the better you are in terms of your uh, buffer capacity. So the bottom line is more moles of the acid and its conjugate parts you have, or the base and its conjugate salt you have, the better you are in terms of your buffer capacity. So keep that in mind. Uh, I would say um, more concentration or moles, uh, stronger buffer capacity. You would have to look at both the concentration and the moles because sometimes that doesn't really replicate uh, one uh, alone by itself. I mean, I can talk in a, I can talk about an example of, uh, let's say, a, a, a buffer solution where I'm comparing two of those. One of them is uh, one molar buffer solution and the other one is 0.5 molar buffer solution. And then I'm looking at both of those to be one liter of solution at the end of the day. So their volumes are the same. And when their volumes are the same, I'm looking at whoever is going to have a, a greater concentration is going to be having a bigger buffer capacity. So it's going to be this one is going to be a better in terms of buffer capacity. But then sometimes if you're comparing, uh, suppose, a, a one molar buffer solution but this particular one is going to be one liter, but then I'm comparing a one molar buffer solution. And then this particular one is going to be 10 liters. So then who is going to be a better buffer? Well, it turns out both of those has the same concentrations, but then in that case, you want to look at who's actually going to have more moles of those acids in the conjugate base or the base and conjugate acid. And in this particular case, it's going to be actually the 10 liters because remember, more volume you have, more moles you're going to have. So you're not going to be standing alone only on the concentration. Uh, Sometimes you can rely just on the concentration if the volumes are the same. But if their volumes are not the same, then you're going to have to look at who's going to have more moles present in there. So this 10 liters of one molar buffer solution is actually going to be a better in terms of the buffer capacity. So this is how, this is what you really have to know about the buffers, how to create buffers, and then the buffer capacity. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.